Today's video, we are going to look at the question approach. So many students were asking me, oh, we've never done business law questions before. How should we answer these questions? What do we look out for? How do they answer them? So in this short video, I'm just going to go through what our expectations are as, as we teach you for how you're going to answer these questions. So the first thing I want you to is that there are really three types of questions that are set in law. We usually have what we call the short notes, the essay questions, and the problem questions. So in all business law exams, usually three questions are set. Short notes, essay questions, and problem questions. So we're going to look at the, these questions in details and how you answer each of them so that you're able to, 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 to know what to do. So this is an example of short notes, you, you know, and the short notes are really parts A to E where you're expected to produce information on each of these points a b c each of them each of them carries five marks and the total of the entire question is 25 marks so some of the things you need to look out for for such short notes is that as you're writing the short notes you you should at least provide a definition a definition will earn you a mark for whatever issue you're talking about please provide a definition and then write as much as possible because you're looking for five marks for each point. You look at this question. You're looking for five marks for each point. So you have to write as much as possible. Then you have to have a case for each short note. If, for example, the short note part A is asking, talking about passing of property, you have to have some cases on passing property. What happens when property is passed? Give us examples. Then you should include a section of the law. Passing of properties under what section of the law? The sale of goods. You know the sale of goods and services act so for each parts a b c d and e we expect you to at least give us definition write as much as possible because you're looking for five marks usually people prefer to do these questions because they're able to fetch a lot of marks and balance out with the other questions that might be harder to some students so the people usually recommend that short notes are easy questions to do they give you easy marks that is something you think about but remember, for each short note, you're looking for five marks. So try to write as much as possible. Make sure there's a definition, a section of the law, and make sure there's at least a case that you're explaining on short notes. Now let's talk about essay questions. How do you answer essay questions? This is just one example I picked randomly on an essay question, an example of an essay question. Explain the different ways through which an agency relationship may be created. So you find that each essay question has 25 marks. Actually, each question, you do usually three, four questions in the exam. And of those four questions, each question carries 25 marks. So you should really struggle to write as much as possible. So when you're answering an essay question, things you have to note, out, note are, for example, that the question carries 25 marks. Don't forget that. So you write as much as possible for the entire question. Then the definition usually has about two to three marks. So please give us a definition. For example, here, what do you mean by an agency relationship? Give us a definition. Then explain the points that you're putting. If you're saying that it can be created in different ways, give us each point. How is each point? Um, how is each agency created, and what are the cases? Always remember that cases give you extra marks. So at least make sure you have a case for each point you're talking about, or at least a section of the law, because this is law radio answering law questions. So we expect at least to have a case. Or a section of the law that you're quoting whenever you're dealing with an essay question. Another example of an essay question is this one. Now, this one you see has part A and part B, and they'll show you that part A has 15 marks, part B has 10 marks, or sometimes part A has 13, part B has 12 marks. So, you make sure you answer each part of the question because if you only answer part A of this essay question, Guess what? You only earn 15 marks out of 25. So make sure you answer part A and make sure you answer part B. And even for these parts A to B, you must answer both questions and remember the marks you're looking out for because they're identified on the question. So make sure you write as much information as possible that will earn you those marks. Then for each part, part A, discuss the different instances when an offer will come to an end. Give us a definition of an offer. You earn two marks. What is an offer? What is it all about? 
two marks usually. Or give us what are the remedies for breach of contract. What is breach of contract? Give us a definition. So for part A and part B, for each part, give us a definition. You know, then explain the points you're answering with cases. Remember the cases or the sections of the law and your extra marks. You'll find that here each point on part A is maybe between two to four marks per point you put. So try to write as many points as possible. And don't forget that extra marks are earned through putting cases. For each point you put, for each point under point A, have a case for what you're saying. For example, if saying an offer will come to an end when there is maybe um, termination of the offer, maybe death. If you have a case, show us what an example of how death led to termination of an, a contract, something like that. So the third questions that we answer or we say it's usually are problem questions. Now, many people find problem questions easy, others find them hard. So it is your decision. The good thing usually, um, year one exams are not, there's no compulsory questions. Usually, not always. Sometimes they're there, but usually they're not there. So you can choose any type of question among the set, set questions. So problem questions are usually easier, in my opinion, but many people find them hard. So a problem question, a typical problem question looks like this. I just quoted maybe three paragraphs, but it typically has five paragraphs, four to five paragraphs. Now... What I want you to note is that usually a problem question, we are expecting you to give us this answer in your first answering of the problem question, this, this information. So we expect you to at least identify the brief facts. So when you're answering a problem question, the first point you talk about is brief facts, underline it and outline for us the brief facts in one paragraph. You know, summarize each paragraph of the problem question, summarize it into one line and give us about three, four lines of the facts. Generally, what is happening in the question, brief facts, that will earn you one mark. Then we expect you to identify the parties. Who are the people in the problem? Name, list them. Just list them. John, Betty, Vero, Brian, etc. That is already one mark. Then three, identify the law you're talking about. Is it contract law? Is it sale of goods law? Is it case law? What is it that you're talking about? What law are you relating to in the question? What law is the question about? Identify that and a mark. Then we expect you to identify the issues. List the issues. What are the issues in this question? List each of the issues in the question. When we see, like I said, usually each, each, each question has about four to five paragraphs. And you find generally each paragraph has one issue. So identify them, list them. One, two, three, four, five. Those are issues in the question. When you see that you've listed the issues, we're going to give you two marks for that. So this is the first thing you do for any problem question. And as you can see already, and five marks before you even start really fully answering the question. That's why I always say they're easier. Because before you start giving us data, we're already giving you five marks free for just identifying what are the facts summarized, who are the parties, what is the law applicable, what are the issues that they're talking about. We are, you already earn five marks. Now we then go to the resolution of the issues. That's where now your full answer comes in. The rest of the 20 marks, they fall under here, resolution of issues. And this is what you're expected to do. For resolution of issues, we expect you to identify the legal issue. What is the issue? Is it capacity to contract? Or if, if, if the legal issue is that acceptance must be communicated, if that is a legal issue, then we expect you to cite the relevant case for that legal issue. If that issue is children are not able to contract, then we expect you to talk about the case Nash versus Inman, meaning that you've understood that Nash versus Inman explains the principle that children do not have capacity to contract. After you've identified the legal issue, no capacity to contract, as seen in the case of Nash versus Inman, then we expect you to show how it is related to the question at hand. In this case, the child Brian was too young to maybe a contract, therefore there was no contract created. You earn five marks in this. So you see how it is very easy. Let's assume the legal issue is um, acceptance must be communicated. You know, so you've identified that in the question that about acceptance, no one accepted. So the issue is whether acceptance can must be communicated. So you say in the case of what was the case? Um, Felt House versus Didley. 
it was established that whenever someone um, makes an offer and there's acceptance, that acceptance must be communicated. Then you show us in these facts, Vero did not communicate acceptance because of X, Y, Z. You're going to earn four or five marks out of that, depending on the marking scheme. So you find that, like I said, each paragraph usually has one issue. Deal with one issue at a go. You usually have about four to five issues, depending on the length of the paragraphs given. And there you earn your full marks very easily like that. I now want to time management because many students um, spend a lot of time on one question thinking they'll earn more marks and they fail to finish in time. Please remember that the exam runs for three hours and you answer four questions. So that means each question you're going to use about 45 minutes on each question. Do not use longer than that on any other question. In others, don't answer question one more than you've answered question two. Because the maximum number of marks you can get from question one is 25. Just like the maximum number of marks you can get from question two is 25. So make sure you allocate 45 minutes to question one. When they're over, go to question two, whether you finished question one or not. Because you need a balanced record. You need marks from each so that you can score a well-rounded score. Otherwise, it's useless for you to get 20 in question one, zero in question two, 13 in question, I mean, um, 15 in question three, and 10 in question four. You've not really balanced very well. So make sure you balance the exam timing. Otherwise, you end up not allocating sufficient time for other questions and you lose out. Those questions could be easier and you might have scored much better. But if you don't allocate sufficient time to them, you end up losing out. Finally, I want to talk about how should you prepare for this exam. You still have some time to prepare. So even as you study to prepare and preparing for these exams, make sure you memorize or at least remember a case for each legal issue that you're dealing with. For example, capacity to contract. Remember that case in capacity contract. Misrepresentation. What's the case of misrepresentation? Um, if you're talking about, um, like, you know, privity of contract, what is the case of privity of contract? If you're talking about um, acceptance must be, you know, communicated, what is the case on that? So for each legal point you're studying or you're, you're studying now for the exam, make sure you have a case for it. And then also remember, like I said, cases earn you extra marks. So keep the cases. Make sure you have a case for each legal point you answer. Then the easiest way to study right now towards the exams is get into groups of five, discussion groups. Look at past papers. What are the questions they've been asking over the years? Allocate past paper questions. I mean, past paper questions, yes, to each person, the five of you. And discuss each one of you. Discuss together as a group. That will give you a feel of what the exam questions are like because you're not lawyers, you don't know what they are like. But it will also help you um, discuss with your friends and get peer-to-peer -peer mentorship. It's very good for you because you learn from your friend and you also exchange information that you know. And remember, whatever you teach someone else, you, uh, you're able to learn it better as you teach it. So the discussion groups help a lot in that respect because you're helping someone else and in that process you're mastering the content much better. So I wish you all the best in the exam. We are expecting good results from you. Um, thank you for watching. Please communicate and let me know if you have any questions through your class representative or through my email address.